let's create this particular tunnel within renders geometry nodes. It's going to be a looping one. So let's actually learn how we can create this. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change it from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Now we can press this plus button to create a new node tree. And then we can go ahead and zoom in, select the group input and tap X to delete it. Now to create the tunnel, we essentially want to use multiple smaller sections so that it's easier to twist and deform it. So let's start creating one small section. We'll press shift a and search for a curve line and we have to make sure that this curve line is on the y direction so the end is going to have a value of zero on the z and we're going to change the y to a value of one now we want to essentially convert this into a cylinder and we can do that using a curve to mesh node and we can use another curve circle as the profile curve so let's search for a curve circle and plug that in. Now the curve circle by default is going to be shaded to smooth and I don't actually want it to be shaded smooth. I want it to have those flat edges visible. So to do that, we're going to search for a set shade smooth node and we're going to simply plug that in after the curve to mesh. And once we plug that in, we'll just uncheck this shade smooth. Now the next thing that we want to do is deform this based on some amount of noise. Now the deformations should happen only on the X and Z axes and not on the Y axis. So we're going to use a set position node for that and some random noise. So let's search for the noise texture as well as a set position node. And if we directly plug this noise texture into the offset of the set position, you'll see that everything shifts over to the top right. And this is not exactly what we want. So the first thing we need to do is bring it back down. So we are going to use simple vector math for that. So let's search for a vector math node and plug that in after this color output from the noise texture. And we have to change this from add to subtract and subtract a value of 0.5 on all of the axes. Next, we need to make sure that this does not have any displacement on the Y axis. So in order to do that, we're going to press shift A and search for another vector math node. And we're going to change it to multiply this time. And we're actually going to multiply it by a value of one on all of the axes, except on the Y axis, we're going to change the value to zero. So now there's no displacement on the Y axis, as you can see, it's flat over here. And even if you shift to this section, it's completely flat. However, another issue is that these points are being displaced differently from their counterparts over here. So what's happening is we have certain areas, as you can see, that's going up to down and things like that. And it'll be very hard to get this to perfectly match up when we create the loop. We actually just want it to go inside only. In order to do that, we need to make sure that the amount that this vertex is displaced has to be the same amount by which its corresponding vertex on the other side is displaced. Now we can do that by simply changing this noise texture from 3D to 2D. When it's in 2D, the noise texture is going to have different values on the XY plane, but the entirety of the Z axis is going going to be the exact same copy of what's on the X and Y axis. We don't actually want that because you can see we still have the same deformations as before. We need it to be such that the X Z plane has the different variations and the entirety of the Y axis becomes just a simple copy of the X Z plane. So in order to do that, we can actually search for a position node and simply rotate that about the X axis. So let's plug this position into the vector and then search for a vector rotate node. And then we can plug that in after the position and just rotate it on the X axis by a value of 90 degrees. So we have to make sure that the axis on the first socket is one and the angle is 90. When you do this, you see everything that's corresponding to each other remains the exact same and we no longer get those random variations and we get this sort of a look, which is exactly what I was going for. However, I don't want it to be this strong. So to reduce the strength, I'm going to search for another vector math node. So I can take this and press shift D to duplicate it. And then I'll change this to scale and I'll scale it down by maybe 0.5. And that just makes it much more subtle. Apart from that, this noise texture, I can actually increase the scale will go to something like 50 just to give it some more randomness. Now this is just one unit. We require multiple units to create the entire cylinder. So let's go ahead and just create 20 points on the Y axis. And we can simply do that by resampling a curve on the Y axis. So let's search for a curve line and we want this to be 20 units long on the Y axis because the origin of each of these objects is present right at the start to make this 20 units, the last point should be instanced at a value of 19 so that the cylinder ends at a value of 20. So we want this end value to be a value of 19 on the Y axis and zero on the Z axis. Then we need to create 20 of these. So let's search for a resample curve node and change this 
from a value of 10 to a value of 20 and plug the curve into the curve. Now we can instance on all of these 20 points that were just created by searching for an instance on points node and plug it in right after the resample curve. And for the instance, we'll take this output from the set position and plug that into the instance. Let's take this output and plug it into the group output. And now we should have an array that goes to about 20 units. That's absolutely all right. And we can start messing around with the next steps which is adding in some form of wireframe to this as well. So to create the wireframe, it's really simple. All we have to do is convert this from a mesh to a curve by searching for the mesh to curve node, and then again, converting it back to a mesh using a curve to mesh. So let's add that in as well. And because we want the original to be added in with the wireframe, we need to join these together using a join geometry. Apart from that, we also want to be able to move these around freely. And to do that, we have to realize the instances. So let's search for a realize instances node and plug that in after the instance on points node. Now let's take this geometry, plug that into the mesh. The curve can go into the curve and the profile curve has to be some form of a curve circle. So let's search for a curve circle and we'll just reduce this resolution down to something very, very low. Let's go with a value of three itself and let's plug the curve into the profile curve. Now, obviously the radius is way too large. So let's reduce the radius to something like 0 0.01. And now we just have a nice thin wireframe added in. We need to set the materials for each of these objects. So let's search for a set material node and plug that in over here as well as this wireframe as well. So let's shift D, plug it in here. And now we need two separate materials. So let's go to the material properties and we already have the default material, which we can rename to tunnel and then we can select that right over here and then we need to create a new material so let's press this plus button press this new button and we'll name this as wireframe and we'll select that on this set material and that's actually it for the geometry node section let's actually start the other modifiers to create the loop so let's go to our modifier properties we'll add in another simple deform modifier and we're going to make sure that it's twisting on the y-axis so if you look at it, it's currently twisting on the X axis, which is not what we want. So let's change the axis to the Y axis and we'll change the angle to maybe 360 degrees so that it becomes a perfect loop. Then to make this a looping animation, we'll require many more instances of this. So let's add in an array modifier. We'll change the offset to a value of zero on the X and a value of one on the Y. And we'll just increase the count to three or maybe four to make sure that it becomes completely seamless. Then we'll select our camera and press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, followed by R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we'll set all of our animation and render defaults. So let's go to our render properties. We'll switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Then we'll go to our output property. We'll change the frame rate to maybe 30 frames per second and frame will keep it at 150 so that it becomes a five second long loop. The output folder can be wherever you want to save it. Double slash will save it in the same folder in which your blend file is saved. So make sure you've saved your blend file. File format, I'm going to choose FFmpeg video for smaller file sizes with the encoding container changed from Matroska to MPEG4 and output quality as per Sepsi lossless. Then we'll press zero to go into our camera view. We'll expand the timeline by a bit. We'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero and we'll tap I and choose location. Then on frame 150, we'll press G Y followed by the length of the tunnel, which was 20 units. And then we'll press I location. Now down here, we'll press T linear so that it becomes a smooth linear loop and this is what it looks like. Now, if we switch our viewport shading to rendered, we can see that this is what we have. So let's start messing around with the lights. The first thing that we'll do is on frame zero, we'll select the default light and press Alt G to clear its location. And we'll press G Y to just bring it in front by quite a bit. Now, once you have it somewhere around there, we'll go ahead and control click the camera from the outline over here. And then with your cursor in the 3D viewport, we'll press control P and choose set parent to object. Now, as the camera moves through the loop, even the light follows. Let's go to our world properties and change the background all the way to black. Then we'll go ahead and change this light color to something different. So let's go to our light properties by just selecting the light and then going down to the light properties over here. And maybe this one will give it a bluish color. So maybe something like that will be good enough. And in fact, let's press shift D to duplicate it and just move it on the Y axis so that we have another light somewhere back over here. And this one, instead of a blue, will make it maybe a reddish or pinkish color. So something like that is good enough. Next, we'll select our cube and start messing around with the materials of the cube. So let's go to our shader editor by changing this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. And we initially have the wireframe material set up. Let's go to our material properties and first choose tunnel. For the tunnel material, we're going to change the metallic value all the way to one. And maybe the roughness will reduce to a value of 0.3. Now let's just place the lights appropriately to make this look even better. So I'm just moving them front by a bit. Then with my camera selected, I'll go to the viewport display and increase passpar to 
all the way to one and I'll just switch off overlays. Then again, with my main geometry node object selected, I'll change this base color to be something slightly darker. So I think that looks really, really good. And now I have to deal with the wireframe. So let's go back to the wireframe material. And I think I'm just gonna make the metallic value all the way to one and the base color can be a really bright white or I can actually make it a nice golden color or a copper metallic color just like this. It's really up to you and what you think will suit the best for your scene. Just to make sure that it is a perfect loop, you can go to frame 150 and zoom in and then change back to frame zero and you should see no visible difference with your scene. If you do see a visible difference, you're going to have to go ahead and increase the number of iterations in your array modifier and that will make sure that it's a perfect loop. But once you're happy with the way everything looks, you can go ahead and render the animation. Thank you so much for watching and if you liked this one, definitely check out other videos on my channel. I have another tunnel animation that I created which has geometric shapes and I think that looks really amazing. So definitely check that one out next. That will be linked in the end cards right now. I post videos every single day so there are hundreds of videos just waiting to be discovered by you. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.